Hello everyone. In the previous video, part one, I have told you how to configure your Tanner S Edit tool. And various points has been covered, like addition of libraries, initialization of software. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can simulate a CMOS inverter. So let's start. So once you add the libraries, so on the extreme left, you will find out following libraries are being added and they are being required for simulation purpose. So these are generic 250 analog lib, 250 devices, misc, spice commands, and followed by spice measure, spice plot, and spice sources. So after this, you will open cell and then you will create a new cell. So here you will rename it to some suitable name so that you can use it for further reference and then press OK. So once you press OK, you will have this box like configuration and you want to get rid of this. So you will select technology, setup technology and schematic page. So once you click on schematic page, uh, you will have this setup being opened. From here, you will change frame style from grid to none. And that's all. Your system is almost ready to work. Now, there are certain points need to be remembered. So, I is to initialize the components. When you press I, a window will pop up on the extreme left. And there, you select the library and the particular component. R is to rotate the component. And home key, if you lost your view in between, then just press home key and your component will be back. If you want to move a component, then select the component and then press Alt. Then you can move that component to your different place. So now, uh, once you press I, here you can see instance name is there, library is there, cell name and symbol view is there. So then, you select the library. So first I'm going to put NMOS and PMOS. So I select generic 250 nanometer devices. And then I will select PMOS or 25 or NMOS. And in the in symbol view, I will select symbol. So you will find out that this is there and you place it. And once you placed it, then you will go for done. So this will be away from your view. Similarly, you will place PMOS. And if you want to change the value, here you can see user. Click on this user, then you can change the value like WL ratio. So that will be discussed in the later part of the videos, which I will create right now. The main purpose is to let you know about the software. Now, your two components are there, PMOS and NMOS as already told to you. Now you want to uh, add some more components like ground. So uh, you will select from your library. Again, you will press I and in library you will pick MISC and then you pick ground and symbol. So your components will be there. Now you will select VDD. So all the components are being selected now using wire tool, here you can see wire tool is there. Using wire tool, you can make the connections. So you click here and here the component will be connected. So once you have done this, then you need input and output ports. So here you can see these are input and output ports. So this is your input port, this is your output port. You pick this up and you can uh, rename it according to your choice. It's not mandatory, you keep it as in or out. Uh, it can be ABC or any other name of your choice, depending upon uh, whether your system is less complex or more complex. So it's for your reference only. So you will make connections. So finally, your uh, inverter is ready. You have made all the connections. And then <laughs> the next thing is going to be uh, this red thing, uh, check and save. And then you will click on design checks. So you will get the possible errors which are there and you can remove it and 
according to your choices. So that's the way you can create a particular circuit. It can be uh, any other gate also for simplicity. I have kept this to a very basic level of inverter. So now you want to simulate this. So what you have done, uh, you will have one DC source so that you can power this inverter. So this is the DC source, your F1. And also you need a pulse source so that uh, you can give a particular pulse input uh, so that your system may vary to inputs zero and ones. And at outputs, you are also getting corresponding ones and zeros. So followed by this, <laughs> what you will do, if you want to make any changes in the values of uh, this pulse, then you will click on user and here you will find out delay, fall time, period, rise time and pulse width. You can make changes accordingly as per your requirement. So once you have provided all the voltage sources and input sources, the next thing is you need to add some probes. So you will select the library spice plot and there you will be selecting the voltage print. And from there, you will uh, be getting the output. So you need uh, three different prints. One is input voltage for DC. Uh, one is input voltage for transient analysis uh, and which we are giving the pulse input. And the third one is we are getting the output voltage here. So this is also in DC. So you need three different print voltage terminals. So you get it from spice plot library. So here you will see three voltage probes are added. And uh, you select the first one and from user and then analysis, you will select the DC or transient and you select the second one, then DC or transient, whatever you want. Similarly, you will assign the transient or DC according to your choice. So now your system is almost ready to simulate. So there is a icon here. This is for simulation settings window. So when you click on this, then you will have uh, this particular window being popped up. So the first step you're going to do is uh, you're going to select this general menu from here. And in that you will be going for library files uh, because these are just symbols. Uh, there is no backend model being added. So from here, you will actually adding some model to this particular symbol. So you will select library files. So when you click here, you will have this window being popped up and then you will click here. So add library from here, your windows will be like this. So this is being created now here, add library from here. So you select from 10 ED folder, process, models, and generic two underscore 259 lib from here. So when you select it, uh, this is the path which you have selected. And then in this section, when you click, then from there are several different types are there, then you're supposed to select TT from there. TT stands for typical, typical. So this is not to be discussed in this course right now as you're a beginner, uh, but in some later part, we will be discussing about this. So you have assigned the library, uh, then you will select the transient analysis, click on this, you, you can see the tick is being there, it is being checked. And then you will assign the different values, 1000 nanometer stop time, uh, print time, and then maximum time step you're going to give. Uh, then you will select the DC analysis, uh, DC sweep analysis. So one thing you are supposed to do is, uh, the first thing is sweep type need to be selected. So I have selected linear step, uh, then source or parameter name. So this is V2 or uh, whatever the, the name in your schematic you can check. And then V is being assigned for voltage source and I is assigned for current source. So V2 is the name and V is being added for voltage or current. So here uh, be specific in this regard and that the first V is your voltage or current source. And second is the name of the source which you are actually using. And then start value and then stop value and then step. So normally we prefer 0 0.1. Uh, you can choose more number of steps also. 
but that gradually increases your simulation time. So if everything is being assigned by you, you can have more than uh, one sources, DC for DC sweep analysis, that is not required right now. So after this, you will click on this uh, run simulation. And after some time, your simulation will be there. Uh, rather than going for this simulation, you can also have P-SPICE simulation. So you can click this, then you will get a SPICE netlist being generated. The same you have done in the previous classes. And if you don't want this, you can directly have this particular window being popped up for you. So this is your transient analysis. Here you can see your input is moving like this and your output is this. So one, zero, zero, one, and so on. So in this way, uh, your entire simulation is being done. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you the live demo that how these things are being achieved. So thank you very much. Uh, and please like, share, and support the channel so that I can put good technical content on this. So thank you very much. See you in the next video.